New York City, it's your mayor, Eric Adams. Welcome to the Get Stuff Done cast. Let's get to it. Welcome back, New York City. And I'm just really excited about who we have here at City Hall today to talk about something that many of us hear about, talked about at dinner parties, walking the streets, of what we saw in the streets, and it, were no, it was known as outdoor dining sheds. And we wanted to see what we can do about them. Uh, this was part of much discussion on how we can get it right. Uh, something uh, that came from uh, the pandemic uh, sort of compelled us to move to a different level of dining. And I have to be honest, it's something I always like. You know, I always like this this Paris feel of New York, of sitting out on the streets and dining. They gave a new dynamic. And as a street watcher, uh, a people watcher, I thought that, wow, how could we get this done uh, correctly? And, you know, the brainchild of getting it done correctly is our amazing council women, council member Marjorie Velasquez. I'm also joined in, st- in the studio uh, by Omar Canales. Uh, who owns a Central American Mexican restaurant, and I'm going to give him the opportunity to say who it is so I won't butcher the name and people won't be able to find it. It's in the Bronx. And one of my favorite people, our chief public realm officer, uh, Ya Ting Lu. Whenever you had a press conference, I know it's something exciting that's about to happen. You know, but even before we dig into this, we did a press conference about our migrants and asylum seekers and their desire to participate in the American dream. And it cannot help me as I sit here today to look at the three of you. The three of you come from different backgrounds, different walks of life. Uh, And I am sure you have your own story, you know, uh, what your parents did, uh, how they got here, how did you uh, get into uh, the different businesses as a council person, as a person that's going to shape our streets, as a, a restaurant owner. Can we just take a couple of seconds and just give like a quick narrative of your journey? You know, uh, Omar, why not start with you? Uh, thank you, Mayor Adams. Yeah, so starting with my journey, my dad, immigrant from Honduras, my mom, immigrant from Ecuador. I myself, proudly born, born in the Bronx, first generation here in New York City. That runs in my blood in regards to where I'm exactly from, which is New York City here. And uh, through that, uh, keeping close with my family, that's how we ended up starting uh, Safe Casinos close to 11 years ago now. Oh, wow, good. 11 years, that's a good run. What is it, average restaurant? Is it five years, they say? It, actually, uh, almost two years, I would say, yeah. Wow, wow, yeah. wow. In so New York, yeah. You 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 survived the hump. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah, we did. Yeah, we did, and it took a lot of shifting of gears and like everyone else, as I'm sure you know. Mm. And, and I'm sure during the pandemic, uh, that sort of sort of uh, threatened the eleven year run that you had. It must have been a really a real scary moment. It was, uh, and it did, and it put everyone to this test, right? Also, it reminded us that asking for help is never a bad thing. Mm. Reaching out to our neighbors, neighboring restaurants, you know, the unknown is always scary. And I feel like that's what we uh, found out during those times. But uh, thankfully, you know, putting our heads together. Uh, thankfully, our team uh, were comprised of more than just a couple of us. Mm. So we were able to, uh, you know, help each other uh, during those times and pitching in. Asking for help is not a bad thing. You know, my my parents uh, were from Alabama and really proud people. And just the thought of asking for help was hard for them, you know, but there were moments we had to ask for help. And we found out that it wasn't as bad as we thought it was, you know, so that was a, that's a, a powerful sentence. What about you, Councilwoman? My parents are Puerto Rican, came here during the 70s and went uh, to the Bronx and, and wanted to make a difference. Uh, at that time, I, I don't know how much folks know about New York City's history, but the Bronx was forgotten. Uh, there were a lot of social services that it lacked and uh, my parents just got involved mm. and they made sure they fought for basic services like sanitation. Uh, they also fought to open up Ostos Community College, right? And so their center has always been about community, right? So I guess to your point, it's never a bad thing to ask for help, but it's also never a bad thing to just 
see a problem and be part of the solution. You know, I think oftentimes what we've seen now, especially with social media, so easy to complain. (laughs) It's so easy to say that everything is just so messed up. And then my response is what I learned from my parents is, but what are you going to do about Mm. it? You know, Mm. how are you going to get this done? You know, um, you have a role to play. You have a role to play to take care of your neighbors, to set a foundation for the future. That's on you. That's on all of us. And you know, one of these things that I've learned as a New Yorker and being raised by like such strong parents um, is that we're aggressively lovable people here in New York, right? We'll tell you stuff. We'll be tough about it. Right, right. But it's that tough love that'll get you through because it comes with the intention of building up. And that's what New Yorkers are about. And I don't like when, you know, narratives shift and try to paint us the other way. We just aggressive lovers. <laughs> no, no, no. And I, and I like that. And you are right. The, like I was in the Bronx, just as the King's Bridge Armory, and the person was talking about what are we doing to help Spanish speakers. And, you know, we all should be helping. I think that sometimes people believe that the solutions are this gigantic thing instead of it's just, you know, what are you doing from your space, from your place? and uh, you know, your parents were right. And I was up at the college the other day. I was blown away at those photos and murals and the marches and the demonstration. Everyday people stated that we have a right to have an educational uh, facilities. And, and look at it now. It's a beautiful space where people are there uh, able to, you know, continue their pursuit of the American dream. Atane, tell me your journey. Yeah, Mr. Mayor, everybody in the city definitely has a history and a journey and coming from somewhere. My parents uh, immigrated to United States from Taiwan and I was born in Taiwan myself. Mm. So I moved here when I was seven. Um, We do what a lot of other immigrant families did. We relied on this sort of informal network of extended family and relatives that were here. It was my grandmother that was the first in the family to move to New York. Mm. She worked in the sweatshops, actually, in mm. Chinatown. Um, and um, she passed last year, but she was a card carrying member of the um, Lady Garment Workers Union. Um, and so th- there was just this sort of profound kind of history and appreciation for what it meant to kind of work um, and work hard to support the family. So I, you know, I was the first in my family to go to college and my Asian parents wanted me to go be a doctor or a lawyer <laughs> or engineer. And unfortunately, I turned into public policy and urban planning and just always had a strong affinity for the city and the physical built environment and what those improvements mean to just everyday people in terms of their health, their social well-being um, and mental health as well. And so love here it, we love are. It. Love it. You know, uh, it's unfortunate for them and you, the aspiration, but it's fortunate from New Yorkers because now you're going to shape our streets, our plazas, our spaces. And, you know, we're really excited about, you know, what you're going to bring. <laughs> you said something that really I, I often talk about all the time. They were able to work. And I think that tied to all of us, it was the ability of our family members to work. And sometimes they were not the best jobs, you know, they didn't pay a lot, uh, but they had a sense of pride. And that is the thing that hurts me the most about the migrant asylum issue. It's got to be devastating for people to be told you can't provide for your family, you can't work. You, You have to have people give you all of your basic needs out of everything that's taking place on the global shift of migration, that is the hardest for me to swallow. You know, when I go to the migrant locations and talk to the asylum seekers, uh, they say, we don't want anything free. We just want to work. (laughs) You know, and they look at me and I don't even know how to explain it that, you know, it's not in my powers, you know, but it is important. And, you know, what we learn from our migrants is how to turn pain into purpose, you know, COVID brought a lot of pain, brought a lot of darkness, but darkness is not only a burial, it's a planting. And out of COVID, this planting took place. We were able to produce uh, this amazing thing called outdoor dining. And I think that's important. 
how did it help you during the uh, pandemic and coming out of the pandemic, Omar? Uh, yeah, no, so it was one of our few great lifelines that we had, thankfully, to the temporary program that uh, is still still on its final days. But um, starting my journey into learning what it took for a restaurant to have sidewalk seating, or as, uh, as we all know, it, used to know it as a sidewalk cafe permit, it was um, back then, I started back in 2018 looking into it because of the demand from our own community in the South Bronx. I learned how difficult it was, how expensive it was. Even way back then, we had even hired an attorney to help us with <laughs> all the red tape and uh, all the different departments that we had to deal with, city departments, down to all the compliance that was necessary to hopefully file this permit. Uh, we never successfully got it. But it's one of the, also one of the few blessings that came out of the pandemic for mm. us. Wanting that sidewalk cafe, and uh, we finally got it. I, I made sure that I was one of the first in line to apply. Because <laughs> it really, it was the team behind me. It was um, our community. You know, in the South Bronx, we don't have that many uh, outdoor restaurants, right? The, uh, the old license permit allowed it or made it easier, I guess, for more Manhattan restaurants, more accessible. But even then, that whole Paris feel, I wanted it also. Not just for us, but for the whole city, right? Right, right. So, yeah, it was uh, very helpful to have alfresco dining, especially during that time of uh, uncertainty, social distancing. So it helped with that. Um, but we definitely want to keep it. And we want to make sure that we're a, you know, a responsible operator when it comes to compliance and evolve with it, right? right? Evolve with it through awareness and education. And it's not just us, right? As one restaurant in the South Bronx, I keep in touch with a network of restaurants, uh, mostly in the Bronx. We're always asking questions, right? We're always uh, anxious as to uh, the changes in these rules. And we want to be responsible. Um, so that's why we're always trying to keep in touch with small business services, right? Uh, for example. Mm -hmm. and, um, and before then, uh, it was city planning. So there's a whole you know, array of uh, rules of compliance. But now we're hoping that it's just more accessible, more affordable, easier to digest in both English, Spanish, and all the languages that we have here. Mm, love it, love it. And you think about it, Councilwoman, that uh, what Omar stated, that it wasn't uh, uh, many outdoor dining locations in the Bronx. I bet you if you go to Brooklyn, you're going to hear the same thing. If you go to Queens, you're going to hear the same thing. If you go to Staten Island, you're going to hear the same thing. Uh, you know, as I move through the city as in my professional life, I noticed that there was just two different cities. There was the outer boroughs who we just didn't have all the things that, you know, Manhattan, Central, New York had. And it was just wrong. You know, we didn't have the plazas. Uh, we didn't have the open streets, you know, where you can ride up and down uh, Park Avenue. We didn't have the outdoor dining. And we just needed to look at the city and say, we only have uh, one city. And we should have the same rules. And I, I assume that's what you saw. That's what you thought. Uh, why did you embrace this whole sadistic mission? <laughs> <laughs> Many reasons. One, I'm a big, big foodie. I love experimenting uh, different uh, cuisines, uh, learning about different cultures and what leads to the plating of different foods. And, and more importantly, what it did for our families, right? Um, yes, I'm from the Bronx. I did not have that many open dining abilities, right? It was just because of the zoning uh, that was literally getting in the way of so many of our outer boroughs. And so what this legislation does, it's a, it lifts that up. And so we're talking about actually creating something that never existed before in our communities, right? And that to me was the biggest point of like, I wanted to emphasize that and say, let's talk about equity. Let's talk about accessibility, something that our communities haven't seen, right? Um, I often talk about out of borough, out of mind. Mm. And certainly um, what started with the de Blasio administration with the emergency order, it allowed folks to actually experience this in their backyard. So what COVID did, it forced you to stay home in a way of looking at your neighborhood differently, right? You started to look at your green spaces differently. Um, at one point, I um, had to work with the Parks Department during the pandemic to open Orchard Beach for much longer um, just because 
that's where everyone in my district was just turning to. It's the, the biggest space uh, in New York City. And we actually had that moment to literally stop and smell the roses. And when we did that, we found that there's more opportunities than what we allowed ourselves to experience, mm. right? Because of different legislation, because of laws. And like, to like compare this to what Robert Moses did with the highways, unfortunately, some legislation, old legislation did that for our food and for our opportunities for restaurants to have that. So it's, to me, that's how I see this, right? It's, it's about equity. It's about our districts literally saying we can have that too because we deserve that. And also just giving more jobs, right? Um, it's a time where we need to understand we need to build back New York City, build back the tax revenue, but more importantly, build back morale, mm. right? And like nothing better than to find your favorite place and now have more space, right? That you can actually eat outdoors. And also for folks that still are immunocompromised and still have uh, those concerns, now we actually can deliver, right? And so we did take our time. I, you know, it, it was over a year and a half, right? That we did go back and forth with you, with the council, with advocates, with restaurants, because we want to get it right. We're not going to rush into things and, and forget about X, Y, and Z, right? Or not understand that there are unintended consequences. We wanted to think things through. And, you know, there are people upset on both sides, right? But that's how I know I got it right. <laughs> that's right. Right? Because if everyone's happy, then someone got it wrong, <laughs> right? And so compromise is coming to the table and saying, you know, this is not 100% what I wanted. But you know what? New York City finally has outdoor dining in all five boroughs. And we have an opportunity to do it with less red tape, more affordable, and certainly bringing back to our restaurants like yours that gave us a safe space to just be with our friends and family. And actually your restaurant was one of them. So yeah, <laughs> so thank you. Thank you for that space. We appreciate it. And then say, except the, you know, the pounds, not really. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I like that uh, the, the one size fits all is just not right. Correct. And you no, know, we can put in place rules that just really don't, uh, they fail to understand life on the ground, like in Orchard Beach. Uh, that's your French Riviera. That's <laughs> what know? it is, yeah. You, you know, you, you take that away. You know, it impacts the quality of life, you know. And I know, uh, Yao Ting, that's what you have to do. You, you have to have that balance, you know, uh, on how to make sure we're going to use these spaces correctly and maintain a level of order and discipline. Uh, you know, so give me the ABCs of the bill, of the new rule that we put in place. Yeah. Omar, I want to go back to a point Omar mentioned earlier and something that we learned very quickly throughout this legislative process is that restaurants were and restaurant owners were so hungry for certainty. I think to run a business, people need certainty mm. and rules of the road and clear rules of the road. And I think that is what this legislation does and pa paves the path for that. And so in terms of the next sort of timeline in ABCs, we are gearing up for the rulemaking process where the city will lay out and propose a set of very clear design guidelines, operational guidelines, um, and the public will have an opportunity to provide feedback and comment. But we're about to embark on this whole sort of, you know, public, transparent, clear process about what the design guidelines should be, what the rules of the road will be, the operational rules. And then once we finalize those, then it's set. The, the outdoor dining application portal will be open early next year. Restaurants can apply. And one thing that you've made very clear as mayor is that we need to center the way that we provide services on the user experience. <laughs> we have to start from the end user. So the kind of experiences that Omar talked about before, navigating, having to hire an attorney, maybe having to hire an architect and spend more money Correct. coming up with plans and setups. No, no. We want to make it easy, accessible, whether you're a fancy restaurant in Midtown or a small business in the outer boroughs. We want to make the whole process extremely easy to navigate and easy to set up. Mm, I love that. And, and Omar, that's so important to us. This administration is about 
Uh, we have the Eric Adams test. If Eric can do it, then it has to be easy for everyone to do it. You know, so uh, what Yao Ting stated is that we're going to need your input also sure, to yeah. share, uh, you know, how this experience can be a good experience. I want to lean into what you said, uh, Yao Ting, what you said about being able to have a, you know, clear pathway. How important is that for a business to have that clarity of know what to expect, respect your time that you can't spend hours on, on hours. You're trying to earn money, uh, not trying to earn points running through government somewhere. How important is that? It's important for time-saving purposes. Time is uh, finite for everyone. When it comes to cost, uh, when it comes to building out our spaces, it's very important for us to make sure that we're providing our unique spaces um, according to the rules. We welcome inspections when it comes to safety, compliancy, whether it's uh, ADA compliancy, for example. We want to make sure that, once again, we're, we're measuring twice, cutting once. Right? <laughs> so that's what we're, we're always trying to do. Because uh, as, as I'm sure you probably know, the restaurant industry is very enslaving um, and uh, takes up a lot of our time. So many moving parts. And moving forward into the future, um, yeah, providing input is something that I'm personally passionate about. Sharing that input and sharing um, how I understand the rules to be is amongst my networks of uh, restaurateurs and small business owners is something that I'm always happy to uh, pick up the phone about. And also working with our uh, inspectors from, let's say, DOT. So we have regular DOT inspections. And we welcome the education first before the fine. Um, we welcome having time to remedy the situations. And uh, I, I think that the education and the awareness, of course, is always expensive. Education is, is never easy, but um, you know that, that input is going to take some massaging, I think, uh, moving forward, because of course, we're trying to satisfy all sides of the issue here. So true, so true. And you, uh, Councilwoman, you talked about jobs. Our restaurant industry hires a huge number of employees, and this is going to help increase the employee population. It sure does. I mean, during the pandemic, it saved about 100,000 jobs. Wow. Yeah, wow. and so you're thinking about what that did there, and that was an emergency order. Now going to Yating's point where the certainty now that we're allowing restaurants to understand, yes, now you can apply. Now you can apply full year for sidewalk, eight months for roadway. So let's actually come up with this plan together. So when it comes to rulemaking, this is where I've been very just like pushy with everyone, every interview, come out. You know, like this is your moment, right? For the, the people that I said earlier about, you have something to say, then say it now, no. right? You have a vision for your community, how you want to see the restaurant um, standardized, right? And how outdoor dining would look like. This is your moment. We have this opportunity to be innovative, right? And take New York to the next level with how we design these concepts. And so I'm excited about that piece, right? And then, so those are the jobs there too, right? We're creating the jobs in the concept and setting these up for the different restaurants. There's also the jobs that like we that. have with the service workers. And more importantly, now we're just building back an industry that really was there for us. And we think about frontline workers and we often thankfully think about our police officers, our nurses, our doctors, EMS. And, and so now we also have to think about the restaurateurs, right? And, and all those mom and pop shops that were open for us. Think about them too and give back in that way. Well said. You know, you are saying, I think about when we did Broadway and you look at that place now with the outdoor dining, it's just a whole entirely new experience. You know, went from cars all over the place, you know, and I guess that's the vision. That's what we should look forward to in the city as we wrap up. That's right, Mr. Mayor. In fact, I was going to say, you know, you talked about how you, you, you know, you long to have that Paris sort of look <laughs> and feel for the city of New York. And I have to say, and, you know, council member, maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but I dare posit that this outdoor dining bill might create, effectively will create the largest outdoor dining program in the country, maybe if not the world, if you combine both sidewalk and roadway together. Interesting. And so it's going to be incredibly transformative in terms of how New Yorkers, tourists, everybody experiences and moves throughout the city and just brings a tremendous opportunity. 
Love it, love it. I tell, I, whenever I'm out, whenever I do my flag raising, whenever I'm out walking the street and I talk to tourists, I tell them, we just want one thing from you. Spend money. Spend exactly. money. <laughs> Thank you. You know, really appreciate it. I'm coming up to your restaurant. I'm going to try some of your awesome. food. And just really thank all of you for what was done. Congratulations, Councilwoman. Job well done. <laughs> it's tough, you. but you just give me goosebumps thinking about how large this is. <laughs> and, you know, let's, let's turn out. New Yorkers, we need you. So turn out. We need these ideas, guys. <laughs> That's right. That's right. <laughs> thank you. All right. Thank you. Awesome. And this is the information I wanted to share today. I hope to see you for another episode of Get Stuff Done Cast.